Well, Ron, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as the title says, Marcus Rashford under the cosh is this um, criticism that he's getting justified. Um, I'm just going to pull the comments up over here as well so I can actually see uh, what you guys are saying. But I do want your uh, guys' opinion, so please get your opinions uh, down in here as well. Um, and we'll get into what's going on. Now, um, he's come under criticism um, for going to a party for his birthday following the defeat to Manchester City on Sunday. Um, and that has led to increased scrutiny and criticism amongst fans. Um, some fans are defending his right to a personal life uh, and to celebrate his birthday. Uh, some fans just expect, you know, you don't go out um, if you lose the Manchester derby. Uh, and actually both points, in my opinion, are, are, are valid. Um, you know, I don't know if Marcus needed to go out. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure he, as a, a wealthy young man, he's got more than enough to um to just invite everybody around to his house to celebrate his birthday. And I believe he should celebrate his birthday. You know, you you're allowed a life outside of football. I I definitely one thousand percent agree and back that. Um if your life outside of football is impacting on your performance, then I think people have a right to have an attitude with that. Now, I do not believe, and you know, I do not believe there's even rumours of, that Marcus's personal life interferes with his football in any way. And people will say, well, he's shit at the moment. Okay, all right, he is. But that, <laughs> you know, one cause is not the effect. Uh, or, you know, one night out is not the reason that he's been poor this season, at least in my opinion. I don't think he has. Um, certainly going out after uh, is not. Um, but the, the criticism has been piled on. So he was in China White um, until sometime past midnight for his birthday, uh, and that had been arranged by close friends prior to the defeat, according to uh, Ducker. Now, he probably would have had the Monday off. Um that's typically the case or if it's not off entirely it would have been just in to do recovery which many of us can stay out beyond midnight and still get up and do what we need to do especially when we're we're in work at the crack of noon the next day which he would have been now i often get told that i don't criticize marcus or bruno because i'm not reactionary like um some creators tend to be whereas the you know, some things require a little bit more patience. Um, but that's usually by people that don't have the fucking brains to understand nuance. I, I've, I did a video about Marcus last week. I've done videos about Bruno in the past. You know, I highlighted that Marcus is getting into some really good goal scoring positions this season. And prior to the derby, it actually had only one shot less than Erling Haaland. I also identified that he probably needs to look at his finishing he's finishing with with over half of his shots being blocked suggesting me that he's either telegraphing or selecting shooting from the wrong place i have no qualms and actually really enjoy breaking down people from a technical point of view and analyzing the football like that no qualms about that whatsoever and actually kind of get fucking giddy and excited about that sort of shit i don't really give a fuck about analyzing people's private lives i've never done that Yo, know, I, I don't rate Harry Maguire as a footballer, but I've never spoken about his private life, even when there's a potential that some of that private life might have impacted upon his performances with, with what happened in Greece. I think that's an example of something that could impact on people's private lives. But typically, I think players should be allowed to do what they need to do as long as they're putting in the work on the training ground. And ultimately, that leads to performances on the pitch. Now... Some people aren't allowed to have grown-up conversations about things like that. And players that are poor form, they want them out of the fucking club. Not only do they want them dropped, they want them out of the fucking club, which is mental to me. And I'm seeing so much revisionism. Marcus and Bruno last season contributed 70% of Manchester United's goals. If you drop both of them, and I've I've just recorded my preview for tomorrow night, and I have dropped both of them. If you drop both of them for four or five games, you will be begging for them to come back into the team. They are not the root cause of why United have been poor. Okay? 
Marcus is one of three forwards. Bruno is one of three midfielders. Bruno is still creating um, an, an elite amount of chances. Marcus is getting an elite number of shots. The issue is the rest of the game for both of those does require looking at and does require work. Um, I don't know if they both look tired. I don't know if they you know, are displaying the correct body language. I, I, and those things matter. Body language and that does matter. Um, something isn't right with both of them. Now, the entire forward line of Manchester United, only Marcus has scored out of the entire forward line. We've been reliant on Casemiro and McTominay for goals. So the entirety of Manchester United's forward line has to chip in with goals. And so does Bruno. Now, for Marcus, he's in the bottom 14th percentile for expected assists. I think fair criticism is he's not linked up well, um, certainly inside the box, with Rasmus Hoyland, and I think that there's opportunities where he could have played him in, where he should have played him in, and he didn't play him in. He's in the bottom 47 percentile for shot-creating actions. He's in the bottom 7 percentile for passes attempted. That lines up with the, the greedy tag that's come across him. He's in the bottom 15% for key passes. And this is against players in his position, not all players. He's in the bottom 10 percentile for tackles and interceptions. One goal and three assists in 13 games this season. 34 shots is the second in the league, only to Haaland. So one shot going in from all of those shots is objectively not good enough. But I think we all saw Garnacho at the start of the season given an opportunity on the left wing while Marcus was deployed down the centre. And we could all comfortably see that that wasn't good enough. Now, I think ultimately the team hasn't been performing. In the slightest. The team has not been performing in the slightest. We haven't dominated the ball. We haven't had a single <laughs> Crystal Palace in the Cup aside, a single good, objectively good performance this year. Is that the, the blame of two players? How many players have featured for United? 20 this season so far? You can't pin it both on just two players. Now, I've seen Marcus getting some abuse, as as unfortunately always happens in these situations. People, I don't know if they feel the need to one up each other in terms of how, showing how much they care by really fucking hammering our own players. Every fucking good moment we had last year was Marcus's good moments. How short are your memories? Maybe he's a form player. And he certainly isn't in form right now, but maybe he's a form player. Maybe the rest of the team needs to support him. I think his finishing is on him. I think his decision-making in the final third is on him. I think his um, tracking back and body language is on him. But I think you're mistaken if you think that you take him out of our team and suddenly we're good. The Super Chat here from Ant says, it's the work rate and body language. I think you make your own look in sports sometimes. If you work hard, it will come. I don't disagree with that. And Lee says, Rashford's suffering because the team aren't performing and morale is low. Confidence is shot. Signed his deal. Feet up, question marks, thought. I'd be surprised if he put his feet up after signing his deal, in all honesty. And I know that that gets slung around loads because it's, it's fucking easy analysis, isn't it? Um... But I think it's it's baseless. You know, he, he didn't sign a deal the season before last where you know he was dealing with the injuries. And it, and it was shocking in that season. So you know, it's one of those. Have we paid him too much? This is the going rate. Unfortunately, Manchester United are in that realm where that's how much players are worth. Um is says he won't be here next time we win a major trophy. Neither will 90% of these players. Well, um, Liam says, afternoon, Steve. How boring is this 10-year rebuild now? Do you know what? <laughs> Here's the thing. 
how many true rebuilds have we had? Because we get, I mean, I'm seeing the similar sort of things that I've seen about Marcus today, about Ten Hag today. Is Ten Hag finished? Fuck him off. I'm seeing all of that today. Um, and I listened to something from um, The Athletic this morning, and I thought it was largely good analysis, but it felt like it felt like they were they'd made their mind up that it's time for him to go. And some of the good from last season, they just distilled it down to this sentence, which, uh, again, is extremely base-level analysis because some of the bigger wins didn't come in this run. They said they started the season poor. Um, then it was the World Cup. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. The World Cup was November, December. That's, like, beyond now. We started the first two games poor. You know, there was a long way between the first two games and the fucking World Cup. Then it was like, then we came back from the World Cup and we were amazing because we did put together an absolutely outrageous run. And then after we won the Carabao Cup, we were shit again. And there is an element of truth, which is why it's probably something that I'm going to see repeated time and time again. But it isn't the truth. Why did it fall off towards the back end of the season? Well, you had injuries. <laughs> Again, you had injuries that you were dealing with. We managed the the months that we was good. We had um, a consistent starting eleven. The part where we struggled, you know, those first couple of games. I did, I, did we sign Anthony after that? We definitely signed Casemiro after that. We might have even signed Anthony after that. <laughs> We had a consistent fit starting 11 through that middle chunk of the season where we were good. And then towards the back end of that, Casemiro fell off, Martinez fell off, and before you know it, fucking Manchester United fell off. Both of those players don't play for us no more. Cameron says, what's my opinion on Rashi not getting into the top 30 Ballon d'Or? Uh, could that have affected his confidence? Um, see, I don't understand when this is um, selected. Like, what is the... It's supposedly a calendar... Like, when from, though? When from? Because if you if it's the start... I mean, Marcus's hot streak was arguably hotter than Messi's, who's just won the Ballon d'Or. But they over-egg the importance of the World Cup so fucking much. Haaland should have won that shit, right? But they, they, they emphasise... Like, it's six fucking games or something in a World Cup. They lost to Saudi Arabia. Do people forget that? No, they don't care about that. All right, cool. Like, how it wasn't Haaland, just fucking ridiculous for me, in all honesty. Let me just go through this, actually, because uh, there's someone just commented, Ten Hag shite. Uh, right, all right. Well, let me show you what Ten Hag's dealing with, shall I, at the moment. If I can find it. Two seconds. So if we go through the, the Manchester United starting eleven and this, he's got his players, right? So he signed the Nana, right, in the Manchester derby. He played a Nana, arguably man of the match. The back four was Diogo Delo, signed by Jose, Harry Maguire, signed by Oli, and on the transfer list this summer. Johnny Evans, who I think all of us, and especially Johnny Evans, are shocked he's even playing because I thought a bit of a backup sign and see what happens. Victor Lindelof played at left back, signed by Jose. Amrabat, um, obviously someone that's on loan, and an Amrabat signing. Uh, sorry, a Ten Hag signing. Scott McTominay, uh, an academy player. Christian Eriksen was a free transfer. Bruno, signed by Oli. Marcus, academy prospect, and Rasmus Hoyland, uh, signed by Ten Hag. Um, you know, and, and thought of as possibly a backup one for the future, see what happens kind of signing. So that isn't a Ten Hag side. Yes, he had Mason Mount and he chose not to start Mason Mount and chose three other midfielders ahead of him, four other midfielders ahead of him. Um, That's potentially problematic. But he didn't have Casemiro, who was a massive part of last season. He didn't have um, Martinez, who was a massive part of last season. He didn't have Anthony, who, despite having no end products, you know, his work rate was a massive part of last season. 
you know, Pep loses Rodri and loses three out of four games. Let's not diminish how important your first choice players are to both your style of play and the performance you expect to get out of them. That Manchester City team is one of the best in the fucking world, if not the best in the world. And you're going into it with a centre-half partnership of Evans and Maguire, and they weren't even the worst players on the pitch. Do you know what I mean? Um, one up, hold up, says, taking off Amrabat was Ten Hag mistake in the derby. I agree with that, to an degree. Um... MF says, too many problems right now. We don't have a first choice back four. Our midfield is soft and our attack is toothless. Yep. Um, Buffy says, Postacoglu signed Madison and it's working for him. Yeah, and I would argue that Ten Hard signed Ericsson, Casemiro, Martinez, Anthony, and last season they were working for him as well. Would you not agree? Um MK says, Steve, it's not about Rashford's confidence or the form. Rashford's decision-making has always been awful. Even his hot streak, uh, his score equal to his XG always. Uh, keep him away for games. Keep him away. Keep him for away games, counterpunch games. Um, let's have a look what his XG was actually last year because I don't know off the top of my head. Last season, Marcus Rashford, I think this might just be league only. Um, his XG was 18 and he scored 17. So yeah, he was just under it. Season before, he was terrible in all honesty, but the season before, um, his his goals were four, his XG was two. Um, so he outperformed. Season before that, he outperformed his XG. Over the 80 goals he scored, 77 goals he scored in the league only, his XG is 80. So he's not far off it, as an example. You know, Gabriel, and this is a winger. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, um, he scored 70, but his XG is 93. He's 23 goals under what he should be. You know, he's got a far bigger, 13 goal bigger XG, but he's seven goals less than Marcus. You know, let's have a look at Sterling. He's getting a lot of plaudits at the moment. Raheem Sterling is 10 goals less than his XG. Uh, Mark says, Steve, can I please explain the point in a centre-back passing on a goal kick to the ki 10 feet to the keeper? What's it supposed to achieve? What it's supposed to achieve is that uh, they believe, and this is my analysis of this rather than being told this, uh, I believe, they believe that Onana is a better um, distributor of the ball than our centre-halves. So you have someone pass it to him so he can be the one pressed and then he has the options either side of him. I don't necessarily think it worked. Um, Keegan says, Anthony could prove to be one of, if not the worst signing we've ever had. Shane says, Ericsson's too slow. He plays when Bruno's rested or not at all. I think there's role for Ericsson in the team. I think he's the best football technician that we have at the football club. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the energy. And actually, there was at one point... Um, he, he actually pressed and won something on Sunday. I can't remember the circumstance of it or when it was. And I said to my dad, how the fuck is he outrunning everybody? He fucking died a couple of years ago. Yet he's got more fucking running about, more stamina, more desire than some of the rest on this team. That's fucking ridiculous, isn't it? Like, I still find it absolutely mind-blowing he's allowed to play in the circumstances with a pacemaker. I find it absolutely mental that he's allowed to play. Yet here he is putting in more of a fucking shift and more of an effort. Ridiculous. Um, David says, I think the perceived lack of effort, fire and passion, that's the problem. The injuries are sympathised with, but the lack of bollocks and fight uh, for the shirt during a derby. Yeah, it's unforgivable. Yep. Um, Richard says, with Maynou back, um, would I start him in the next couple of games to see if the energy levels rise? A lot put on a young lad. How I wish we had Bellingham now. Um, I didn't select him for uh, tomorrow's game, but I would probably give him 45 um, off the bench, second 45, uh, because uh, you know I, I went with Amrabat and Casemiro to see what they could do. Um, the way Newcastle play, they're a press-heavy team. 
and I would say you've got to get on the front foot against them and you've got to um, get the ball over the halfway line. United can't play it long, so why would you fucking bother? You just need to be better playing it out. Use uh, Onana to the things he's good at and use um, the players that we've got to do it. So I would go with Delo, Regulon, uh, Varane and Evans with Amrabat, Casemiro in front of them. Those six, seven players should be able to comfortably play out against most presses. So let's see it. Because we couldn't do that at weekend for whatever reason. Uh, Fergal says, everyone talks about building the club back, uh, but panics every bad moment. Yep. Klopp allowed to finish fifth last year and could push City all the way. Did Liverpool expect to play the same without Van Dijk? It's a good point. And Klopp finished, was he eighth and fifth? Something in that ballpark. Arteta has been allowed to finish eighth twice. Like, if we finish fucking 11th, he's still got a higher average finish than Arteta has in his first couple of years. How how about some fucking patience? Um, Keegan says, I remember saying on the day we sound Mount that I don't see where he fits in the long term. Uh, you can say squad depth, um, but we need to improve our starting eleven before we worry about depth. Yeah, I mean, I did a video looking at where he might fit in, and he he hasn't really played like that. It required a modification of what's going on with Bruno, which I thought was something that was going to happen, but maybe that isn't going to happen. Um, MF Grimm says the owners don't care, and that's in the players. Uh, we went from winners' mentality to losers' mentality in ten years. Uh, Jordan says so many rivals want United to fail so bad which says a lot yes uh, Apna says what's my thoughts on Ten Hag going for high intensity midweek with so many injuries and choosing counter pressing for the present squad I find his comments interesting um, and I'll probably do a video tomorrow discussing these a little bit more in depth but I do find his comments very interesting um, that he says he can't play the way Ajax played um, because of the personnel. You, on the face things, you go, all right, yeah, fair enough. Different players. You play to the players you've got, but then you go, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You've got Donny van der Beek here. You've got Anthony here. You've got Onana here. You've got Martinez here. You know, you've got Ericsson, who's, you know, not one of your fresh players, but, you know, he knows the system. And you go... I think you could play this way here. I think you could do what Ajax did here. Now, he obviously doesn't think so. So, you're not going to see it because the man who, who could implement it doesn't think it's possible. So, that's a worrying sort of uh, revelation. <laughs> but if he's not trying to implement that, I actually not... 100% sure what the fuck he is trying to implement. Um, Tom says, Steph, it's Steve, but all right, uh, is getting delusional. United are shite. At what point here, in anything that I've fucking said this morning, you fucking widge, have I said that United aren't shite? I know we're shite. Uh, Curtis says, I believe Ten Hag is the right manager, but I think he's falling victim to the hole that is the toxic upper management of the club. Like his predecessors, seems no manager can survive. Yeah, and the Glazers don't like to hear the fucking truth that they're after problem. Isn't it? Um, Matt says, genuinely, has he painted himself into a corner feeling like he can't use Sancho? You can't use Sancho. You can't be a disciplinarian that doesn't back yourself. You, know, you you have to see through what's what's right, and you can't have players tossing it off in training. It doesn't work like that. Um, Notch says, can we really just emulate Ajax in a harder, faster, more physical league this easily, though? It's not easy, for sure. It's definitely not going to be easy, but I think you have to try. You have to try. I mean... I thought we started to see the semblance of his ideas last year. Now, we're not seeing them this year. And I think half the reason you're not seeing them is because you're not seeing our first-choice players, because I think that makes it a lot easier. 
you know your your ideal 11 should get a better idea of it um than your your second string 11 and, and some players are better suited to certain systems than others i think the most worrying thing for me is the lack of adaptability you know, Ollie got Ollie got told he was all vibes and no tactics, and he was fucking clearly tactics. You know, there's I'm hating the revisionism that I'm seeing about Ollie. We was trying to tell you at the time that he needed a bit of time. Now, ultimately, Ollie believed he wasn't the right man for the job by the end, in my opinion, and therefore he was never going to succeed because once you've lost your own belief, then you know there. But he was ground down. He was undermined by pundits on TV. He was undermined by the media, um, potentially undermined by some of his players, you know, whether that's Sancho or Ronaldo or whoever. The expectations that surrounded Oli after getting the likes of Ronaldo and Varane and Sancho, and we didn't hit the ground running. And there was uh, this clamour for, well, what's his fucking style of play? Because he never had like a real dedicated, obvious style of play. But here's a couple of things Oli did. Oli had more 5 0 victories than the rest of the post Sir Alex Ferguson managers combined in just two years. I think he had 10 in two years. 10 arguing, 18 months of us had none. And I feel like it was none for Louis, for Moyes, and for Jose. So he knew how to rack up a score. He also won more games against Pep at the Etihad than anybody else. We had games where there was a belief that this team would find a way to win. And I think Oli needed someone else. I don't know who. Maybe he needed an extra experienced pair of hands. I think what Michael Carrick... And Kieran McKenna have gone on and done since shows that they were great coaches with a great understanding of the game. Maybe they needed someone with a touch more authority about them to work with them and with Ollie. Maybe Ollie didn't quite have the ruthless side that we all thought he needed with certain players. You know, he wouldn't park in the manager's spot. I get it, I love it, but I also don't love it at the same time. Bit of a conundrum. You know, he went on a fucking outrageous winning streak. He'd identified shit, man. Bellingham, Casado, Haaland. What if we'd have had a director of football capable of convincing those players? Bellingham would have moved here if we'd have offered him first team football. But supposedly we went, no, nah, you're not quite ready yet. So he went to Dortmund. Those were players that Oli identified. We'd have one of the best midfielders in the world right now. What if we'd have just give Oli patience? Now, you're not going to go back. Ten Hag needs a director of football because one of the things that's probably keeping him in a job at the moment and one of the things that's also putting on additional pressure for him is he's doing the recruitment. It's obvious. It's his WhatsApps that's fucking doing the recruitment. You need a Paul Mitchell to come in and be identifying players and giving you them. Your managers manage. They might know the characteristics they want, but it doesn't mean they're able to identify those characteristics in somebody else. That's why you have recruitment specialists. Uh, Jed says, Ten Hag lost as many games this season as Oli did in his final season uh, and done so with a month sooner. Um... Emea says Oli needed to pay Haaland uh, what he was ready to give Ronaldo. Uh, Roy says, still my disappointed with Keane and Nev. Uh, not pushing back character saying, or Carragher saying Ten Hag has no style of play narrative and, and media trying to get him sacked because it's clicked. I think so. I think there's um, I think there's some truth to the no style of play thing, but you know, roll it back five minutes. I just spoke about that then. Um Jordan says, before firing a manager like Eric, one has to think first about who they're replacing with. If none, then don't. It's about having a fucking plan, isn't it? It's about having a plan and sticking through it. Nothing's ever going to be perfect 
all the time. And sometimes I said this at the weekend, um, and, and I said it either on here or on uh on paddock, and I apply this to myself as well. You win or you learn, right? But you have to learn if you don't win. There's no point glossing over how oh, we got beat, opposition are a bunch of dicks. Yeah? You have to look at the specific reasons why you are losing games of football if you're losing. Paddock have lost one fucking game in six months. We've drawn two, right? And I get fucked off thinking about that. And I think about how I can turn that around. I have to learn from those losses. Yeah? And you might learn more from losses, they say, yeah? Than you do from victories. But you have to fucking learn from those things. United need to learn. What did Manchester City do? better than us what does the fucking half a dozen other teams that have beaten us this season do better than us what do we need to do to get to that level that Bayern Munich are at that Manchester City are at that's what we have to do Thrice says Steve doing some Oli revisionism I just give you the numbers mate did I not I didn't say let's fucking keep him did I I said when he stopped believing in himself the time was right for him to go and he stopped believing in himself. Men why lie. Women lie. Numbers don't fucking lie. More five nils than the rest of the managers combined. The win streaks. The the wins uh, against the odds. He did that more than anybody else. MK says, I'm so pissed at our fan base buying the narrative and pushing Oli out in 2021. Carrick and McKenna showing us their tactical now. Fans wanted system football and Ten Hag's clearly abandoned it. Finney says, one fuck all. Right, so if we'd have won on a penalty shootout, would that have changed your entire narrative? <laughs> Winning things is important. Of course it is. But if it doesn't win that season, do you just go, fuck it? Get rid. And does winning the League Cup secure Ten Hag for an inordinate amount of time now? Thrice says, don't be revisionist, the complete revising history about Ollie. We were getting stuffed every week. Yeah, it ended badly, right? I'm not revising that. It absolutely ended badly. I've literally said three fucking times now, he stopped believing in himself for whatever reason. It did not look like the players were playing for him. At the end, it was the end. One of the worst performances I've ever seen was that Old Trafford. The 5-0, I think it was, at Old Trafford. That was very soon before he went. And from then, I think it was done. I don't think there was a way back from him from that moment. But I wonder if it was, a, if there was more pushback, more celebration of the things that we were doing right. This was a man that, yes, he didn't win anything, but he was the only manager's post for Alex that has finished in the top four twice. Only! One. Would winning a fucking League Cup of Trump's coming second and third? Fergal there with a super chat says, a way to fix this is the CEO coming out and saying Ten Hag is my man. He's here long term. But the issue is the CEO doesn't even know if he's staying. Boom. Yep. Boom. Perfect point. Zach says, you said Ollie wanted Haaland and Bellingham, but he also wanted Issa Diop and Longstaff. Did he, though? Are you sure about that? Um, Exit Light said, Ollie's plan came apart when the Glazers forced Ronaldo on him. I think uh, Ollie was one of the last people to find out who was signing Ronaldo. By the sounds of things. Listening to how that, that went down. I actually think that that's true. I think he was one of the last people to find out. And I don't think you'll ever get the truth out of him saying that he didn't want him or anything like that because he's not like that. But, you know, one of them, in it. Anyway, that's it from me. Preview will be out a little bit later on, so please make sure to subscribe and tune in for that. And I dropped a video yesterday. It's not done loads of views because it's about my fucking lowly little football team, but I would really appreciate it if you give it a watch um just go give it a watch it's the last video that was up on the channel it's called this week at paddock it's why fan ownership is important and i would like some questions from you guys over on that video so please go check that out let me know what questions you've got on there uh, and i will see you guys in the next one laters 
Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.